right, grade five, we're continuing with our big idea for data. Collecting, displaying, and analyzing data helps us to solve problems and understand the real world. Our concept today is to demonstrate an understanding of how to construct and analyze a double bar graph. Um, and of course, then how to interpret those double bar graphs. This is unit seven, lesson two. All right. What do you usually eat for breakfast? Students across Canada answered this question. And here we see this information in two bar graphs that show the typical answer of 100 boys and 100 girls. So what boys would eat for breakfast is on the green graph. What girls would eat for breakfast is the red graph. And we can see, see it's a very, very clearly uh, done graph. What boys eat for breakfast is our title. And of course girls. Breakfast foods, the foods are listed clearly. The number of students, uh, be it boys or girls, and we can see they've numbered by tens and they've numbered on the lines. Um, very important to number on the lines when creating your graphs. From both of these graphs, we know that more students eat grain products than any other food for breakfast, probably toast or cereal. Most students eat breakfast, but some don't eat breakfast at all, not very many. We can take this same information and display it on a double bar graph, which is essentially the same, but it's taking the two sets of data and placing them right beside each other so they can more easily be compared. So you use this graph to make comparisons between sets of data. A double bar graph is used when you're making comparisons between two different sets of data about the same information. So they're both about what they eat for breakfast. It's just two different groups, boys and girls. Okay, so the title tells you what the graph's about. We said that was a good title. The horizontal axis, remember our geometry, horizontal is side to side. So our horizontal or our x-axis shows us the breakfast foods. Our vertical or up and down axis shows us the number of students, also sometimes called axis Y. Uh, we do need to look at our scale. They've counted um, by 10, so each square is 10 students. A double bar graph has to have a legend that tells you what the two colors represent. Without a legend, it is extremely difficult to read a double bar graph and compare the sets of data. So you must have a legend of what color or sometimes if you don't have colors, people do patterns, um, so like a diagonally lined bar as opposed to a dotted bar or something like that. But both need to be in a legend if it's a color or it's a pattern. So from this double bar graph, we know the following. More boys than girls have meat for breakfast, maybe a bacon or a ham or something. More girls than boys have no breakfast, so the no breakfast bar is higher. And we could also see that more girls, or sorry, more boys have grains for breakfast, more girls have milk for breakfast, and so on. And we could even clarify and say, okay, about this many more, so it looks like about five more, perhaps. Um, any bar graph may be drawn with its bars horizontal instead of vertical. So they could very well have drawn their graph with the bars going sideways as opposed to up and down. Either is just fine. Remember when you're making conclusions, an excellent conclusion includes specific information about um, two sets of data. So for example, uh, approximately 17 more boys liked meat than girls. That would be a specific um, conclusion. If I just looked at this and I said, uh, 10 boys have no breakfast, that's not a conclusion. That is just reading one bar. If you're just reading one bar or one point on the graph, that's not a conclusion. You need to be comparing some data in order to make a conclusion. And to make it excellent, you go above and beyond and perhaps discuss two or three uh, points together or the difference between the two, something of that sort. All right, so to practice. Here we have Jasmine's sleeping habits. We have all of her days. We have the number of hours, up to 12 hours. And we have the dark filled in bars being the hours she slept at night 
and the lighter, not filled in bars, the total hours of sleep. So perhaps sometimes she's doing some sleeping during the day. Maybe she's having some naps. With your elbow partners, uh, make four excellent conclusions using the data from the graph. So press pause and try making some excellent conclusions right now. Use your partners to help you come up with excellent conclusions that are specific and compare more than one set of data. Press pause and do that now. All right, you may have come up with all kinds of different um, conclusions. Um, some conclusions that I came up with or that I could see from looking at this graph is that on Sunday, Monday, and Tuesday, she slept the same number of hours at night, eight hours each night. Uh, we can see that the number of hours that she's sleeping at night is increasing. On Wednesday, Tuesday and Monday, she must have had, oh, and Friday, she must have had a nap on Monday, Tuesday, and Friday. It looks like she had a two-hour nap each day. Uh, the day that she got the least amount of sleep would be Sunday. The day that she got the most amount of sleep would be Saturday. Um, for uh, Friday, it looks like she's gotten about an hour of a uh, nap in there. Those would all be conclusions we could make. Uh, excellent if they're comparing more than one set of data and are specific in the difference if there is a difference, so two hour difference and so on. Those kinds of things are what make excellent conclusions. All right, you are on your way to do some graphing and interpreting of double bar graphs. Page 263, 264, numbers 1, 3, 4, and 5, interpreting double bar graphs. Uh, remember, of course, if you have questions along the way, to please ask.